Shalom. This is Nizama Shal Hamadabar Yasharal again for another video. This time I'm going to be doing a video on the correlation between Abraham, our forefather, and the Brahmin priest caste of India. But before I do that, I'd like to go ahead and give a shout out to the 12 tribes of Israel scattered to the four corners. All praises to the Most High, our power. For the most high our power is one so having said that um let me go ahead and quickly mention that i did promise a viewer i was going to be talking about the wisdom of the kabbalah and i also had the intention of doing a video on kundalini because both of these topics are very misunderstood and propagated as something satanic or evil based on the fact that a lot of the pagan cultures and communities have adopted or stolen rather them and attributed them to their own deities in their own culture and so we're left believing that oh well this is the source of that so it must not be the most high that's far from the truth it's just been tainted so i will touch on that but in this video i'm going to be speaking on abraham and the connection between the brahmin priest caste of india so basically brahmin is the ultimate reality and is the creator and separate and independent of the creation but yet also part of the creation as the creation itself emanates out from brahman and so brahman permeates all the creation in from the macro to the microcosm atman or what we would call the soul is basically the same thing as brahman at its core but it's Brahman in the flesh emanated out in Brahman's creation or dream state. So um, this is the basic belief system of Brahmanism. There's a lot of overlapping similarities with Hebrewism. I've also posted some pictures of that in the video as well and some articles on the bottom. But I'm sure you can already recognize um, some of the overlapping similarities based on that description alone. As Hebrews, we believe that our power is one. We're also told that the most high, our power, which we are children of, that we are also gods because of that, going back to the whole Brahman and Atman, okay? Um, so that's what Brahmanism believed. Now, the Brahman priest caste was the priest caste of India responsible for teaching spiritual principles and protecting the spiritual principles. So when the Brahmin caste fell into idolatry, which they did, and uh, modern Hinduism is a very good example of that process, they went from believing in Brahman as the ultimate one reality to worshiping the emanations outside of, of Brahman that came forth from Brahman, instead of looking at Brahman as the um, principle which is ultimate reality, which creates, sustains, and destroys, they started to worship um, those individual emanations or aspects as amorphized deities, as what you would call Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva in the Hindu tradition. And before that, they were into fire worship of a deity, a nature deity called Agni, which was the first ascension into that idolatry. So as we know about our forefather Abraham, is he was very much against idolatry, which is why he burned his father Terah's idols and he left the Brahmin priest caste community. Now something I want to point out is um, something that's still the case to this day regarding the caste system, as the names of the people that are in the caste system are often reflected by the caste system they're in. So Abraham, or Abram, which was the original name, connecting to the Brahmin caste system as he is connected to the priest caste. This also explains that when Abraham left um, the, the community because of the idolatry they were in and was seeking the Most High, he took all of that spiritual ancient wisdom with him. And because he forsake the idols that the rest of the priest caste had gotten into, the Most High continued his covenant with him. He considered Abraham a friend of the Most High because he sought 
the Atman or the soul and the Brahman as a result, you know, how we'd look at it from that Brahmin perspective. So that is why we are called the nation of kings priests. It's not just because we're from the line of Jacob and that promise was made to us. It goes back even further. Abraham himself was from a very special select bloodline or caste going all the way back to India. So it's all connected. Now you can see that with um, the other children of Abraham, you know, the Ishmaelites, for example, anyone that came forth from Abraham, they're still part of that Brahmin caste. They're just not chosen to have the continuation of the priesthood or those laws. But you'll see that the people that came forth from Abraham um, are more spiritual than some of the other nations. And they will be drawn to more um, spiritual Eastern or monotheistic type idolatrous religions that resemble most closely those ancient traditions that their forefathers came out of. So that's why you see Ishmaelites, for example, commonly found in Islam, because there is some semblance, although it is in an idolatrous religion. So there are um, overlapping similarities between what the Brahmins practice as rituals and what the Levite priests were told to do. For example, um, the ancient Brahmins um, offered bread and ghee, which is clarified butter. The Levite priesthood uh, made offerings of bread and olive oil, which I think had more to do with the specific location they were in and the crops that were available at the time. Both offered feasts during the full and new moon. As we know in Leviticus 23, we're instructed to offer make offerings of bread during the new moon and the full moon feast. Some of the full moon feasts are Passover, um, you know, the Feast of Booths and um, the first day of unleavened bread, etc. All of that happens during a full moon and during those harvest times. So just like the Brahmin priest caste did, they did offerings over fire with incense and they believed in one reality, source, or creator. So there's all of that um, commonality there. There's many more, which I've included in the video. I just don't have time to get over, um, excuse me, go over all of it, but I want to touch on those because those were the main ones. Also, one thing that I feel is kind of interesting is that the Brahmin caste were white because it symbolized kind of that um, strive to be pure and um, set apart and one with um, Brahmin. And I know that the Levi priests um, were not instructed to wear white, but we do read in our future prophecies of the Most High clothing us in white linen after um, washing the crimson transgressions from us. So um, I definitely see that as a future prophecy of us becoming one with the Most High at that level in the future and so i think that's pretty cool so i think i've covered the basics um about that um as far as proof and the story behind it and i've also included pictures to describe that as well in the video and i will include links for references um, in the video as well once I upload it onto YouTube. So I don't think it'll be necessary for me to do a second video. This is just supposed to be a very general basic video touching on that. Um, just because I feel it's important for us to understand the more distant roots because there's a lot of um, conjecture, a lot of missing information because of the oppressor and the lengths that the oppressor has gone to to hide our true identity. And it, it doesn't just go back to us being from the 12 tribes of Jacob, but it also goes back even much further than that. So I just wanted to point out that origin and provide some information. I will be posting some more videos that are somewhat related in the future. And as I said before, um, I will be posting in the near future videos on the wisdom of the Kabbalah and Kundalini.
So thank you for listening. I hope you found the video to be edifying. And I'm going to go ahead and, like I said, upload this. And feel free to research it in more depth. There's a lot of information out there. And uh, hope you enjoyed it. Shalom.